uh, specialist stage. Slight change to the build program in that I'm introducing rather than Carolyn. Um, and that's because uh, our next speaker is a very old friend of mine, and I promised him rashly a few months ago that I would introduce him when he came on stage. He did um, tell me a good story about the last time he was here, but I won't embarrass him by repeating it, other than to say that it was not the PPA Festival. Um, but I'm delighted that he's here with us today. He's going to tell us all about a fantastic brand, one that I know very well and I used to work on but gone to new heights under his management and the rest of the team are here as well. So please join me in giving a huge round of applause to Chris Kerwin. Thank you, Thank you James. Um, so I'm Chris Kerwin. I'm Publishing Director at BBC Worldwide. Um, and today I'm going to talk about the Good Food brand, the BBC Good Food brand, which has the highest reach of any magazine brand in the UK measured across print and digital according to the NRS. Um, I'm going to keep things pretty simple. I'm going to do two, three, uh, two things, three things. Uh, I'm going to tell you where we are now. I'm going to tell you how we got there. And I'm going to tell you where we're going next. And I'm going to do all of that with the really stretched metaphor of an Eton Mess cheesecake. Um, if you make it through to the end, um, I have Eton Mess cheesecakes for all of you. We've actually made 300, so you'll probably have about eight each. Um, thought the audience might be a bit bigger. Anyway, firstly, for our international colleagues, I need to describe what an Eton Mess is. There's the recipe there, traditional English dessert comprised of whipped cream, broken meringue, and strawberries. Um, but where did the name come from? This is Eton, an old public school where these two uh, posh boys went. Uh, and a mess um, is something that's scruffy, untidy, and unkempt, much like this chap here. Um, I was going to make a joke about what a mess uh, these two guys had got the country into, but because I work for the BBC, I have to be impartial, so I'm afraid I can't make that joke. Um, so, where is BBC Good Food today, 28 years after first launching as a magazine? So there we go. In summary, we have the number one paid, uh, uh, paid food magazine in the market, the number one food website in the UK, and the number one live food events business. In all, we make revenues about £25 million a year, and we've been at growth, in growth at revenue and profit for the last four years. So how did we do that? This is where my cheesecake comes in. Good Food Magazine was launched 28 years, uh, 28 years ago in November 1989 with a 90p cover price. It was a fairly bog-standard recipe magazine, a traditional cheesecake, if you like. Those recipes are still at the heart of our business today. We create about 75 new recipes a month in our test kitchen. We triple test them all so they work for our audience, and we add nutritional information to all of them, which we've done since day one. We own all the rights to all our recipes and images in all territories. Sorry, that was the cheesecake. This is why 
the recipes remain at the heart of our brand. Forgot to click my slides forwards. Um, and we've made a lot of money by selling our magazine. To date, in the last 28 years, we've sold over 110 million copies of BBC Good Food magazine. And we reckon that that's made us over 250 million pounds. Um, but we've also adapted our business significantly in seven key ways um, to create this reach giant that I was talking about earlier, much like we've changed our traditional cheesecake into something much better. So how have we done that? We firstly enhanced it by extend extending our content remit. We've added a range of content verticals like travel and health um, so that we can cover all of the food market. We can answer any food question. How does this relate to our cheesecake? In terms of our cheesecake, because we cover travel, it means we've added mascarpone and balsamic. Because we cover health, we can tell you that we need to add 600 grams of strawberries, and that strawberries, seven strawberries account for one of your five a day, enhancing the content. Secondly, we put our content where people wanted it, so that our audience could access their cheesecake wherever and wherever, whenever they want, in our magazine, online, in an app, in a bakes and cake book, in Pinterest, on YouTube, on Facebook, in spin-off magazines. Nextly, we make sure we always work with the best fresh talent, whether they be household names, leading chefs, TV celebrities, or social media stars. One of these famous people told us that we should add 10 mini meringues to our cheesecake. Next, we make sure that we focus, focus on and lead key food trends. In cheesecake terms, this means we add seven edible flowers to our cheesecake. In business terms, this means we introduce our readers and users to new cuisines, trends, and chefs, and take the pulse of the nation annually in the UK's biggest food survey, the Good Food Nation, which you can see scrolling past here. As you saw from the video, this drives millions of PR impressions for us on an annual basis. I think that's the end. But we don't just tell people how to make our cheesecakes, we show them how to do it. You can see some of our videos running behind there. Video content in the last two years has been increasingly key to our offer. We make hack videos, how-to videos, all of our top recipes have been made into video content, and we're starting to experiment with series of videos on YouTube as well. They don't always go this quickly, though. There we go. We also take our show on the road. We have eight live shows in London, Birmingham, Glasgow, Harrogate, and Belfast, and in locations like Hampton Court Palace and the Tower of London. And you can see on the right there, we also work with international partners. The video you can see there is coverage of our BBC Good Food Awards in Dubai. Not much cheesecake there, since our Middle Eastern publisher focuses more on restaurant content and eating out than on home cooking. But it's a pretty spectacular event. Finally, and the seventh point is we continue to innovate in advertising, using our contacts and skills to make exclusive partner content on advertisers' behalf, and using our scale to drive audiences to that content. But the innovation doesn't stop with partnered content. We've made a huge success of programmatic advertising on bbcgoodfood.com, using our scale to drive significant revenue increases over the last few years. What does this mean for our cheesecake? Well, nothing very much, but it does require 420 grams of full-fat cream cheese to make it, and our audience might want to use the Philadelphia that we're advertising. So, our cheesecake with crushed digestives, cream cheese, strawberries, is now an eaten mess cheesecake, having added meringues, mascarpone, balsamic, and edible flowers. We know when we've eaten it that we've had one of our five a day, We've seen how to make it, both online and in our hometowns, and we've dazzled our friends with talk of edible flowers and other trends. We also quite fancy a long weekend in Italy. In business terms, we've expanded our content remit to cover content verticals related to food. We've given the audience multiple access points to our content so that they can read their recipes and other content wherever they want. We always work with fresh talent. We focus on and lead the trends in the food market. We show people how to do things with video content. We take our show on the road with our live events business, and we innovate in advertising. So in 2017, much like our cheesecake, our business has been transformed into something very special. 
There you go. I told you I was going to stretch that metaphor. Um, so where do we go next? We're currently investing significantly in the brand and are following a six-point plan to deliver further growth. The first and the most important area at the moment is investing significantly in our digital business to drive further audience engagement and loyalty through personalization. We're doing things like launching a companion app, the first version of which we released last, last week. Uh, we're increasing our video production activities and we're offering more personalization to users who sign in our, on our website. To that end, we've just added a host of new roles to the Good Food team. But the scale of our print business remains really important and central to what we do. And then we're investing in newsstand promotion and subscriptions marketing to retain that scale, whilst also using our huge content archive to publish a portfolio of spin-off products and keep that revenue where we need it to be. We'll continue to expand the brand's editorial remit through a single editorial team pushing out into those content verticals that I talked around, about around travel, restaurants, health, and all of the others. We'll continue to run and experiment with different live formats. So this year, we've launched a new brand called Feast, which is our, our outdoor live format, which, as I mentioned, was at Hampton Court and the Tower of London. And we're focusing on driving innovation with some bold strategic calls. Um, across the next six months, we're going to look at driving transactional revenues from our website, so selling um, cookware, selling holidays, um, and we're also doing some work on the connected home, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And finally, we're working with our BBC offices in Australia and South Africa to build our business in those countries, and are also looking for publishing partners across the world who are interested in working with us to replicate our success in their territories and countries. So, last couple of slides are about uh, the connected home that I wanted to to mention. We're very excited by this. By the end of October, we'll have built a prototype voice app that links our recipe database with connected prod products in the kitchen, such as a Samsung fridge. This means that our audience will be able to ask us what they can make for dinner based on the ingredients we know are in their fridge. In this example, the fridge has eggs, strawberries, and cream cheese, so our app will be able to tell you what ingredients you need to pick up or have delivered to make that famous eat and mess cheesecake. So that's it from me. There's loads of cheesecakes being set up just outside the back door there. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm sure James will take them. Thank you. more about the personalization, like what is the carrot that you're dangling to get people to give you information to log in, and then what is the experience that they get once they're there? Okay, um, if uh, we're honest, we've got a huge user base, but we haven't got a huge signed in user base, basically because we haven't offered people that much. All you can do so far is save recipes, save your favorites, and build them into collections. So we want to know if you're interested in health, if you're diabetic, if you're training for a marathon, so we can serve you a personalized version of our website that, that really works for you. So that's really the big hook. Got it. Gonna take some uh, out. Hello, uh, I'm just wondering, how, what is your connection with the TV programs? Um, so we, uh, TV programs on BBC TV? Yes, but BBC TV, because I can see on BBC, they also have food. Yeah. That's um, not, a diff uh, not an easy one to answer. So no. we, um, we're part of BBC Worldwide, which is the um, commercial arm of the BBC. So um, Good Food launched as a magazine, and whilst we cover, um, you know, we cover all of those TV shows, we talk about them, we, we work with the sh same chefs they work with, we're not actually linked to them. So um, BBC TV isn't allowed to drive traffic to, to this website. They have their own food website. Is that it? That's it. Thank you. Please do eat some cheesecake. <laughs>